In the previous video, we started to look at the different sources of suffering for animals in the wild. In this one, we will continue by examining two very important causes of misery for these animals, diseases and parasitism. To consider how disease can be harmful to animals, think of the immense suffering that diseases cause human beings before the advent of modern medicine. Well, this is the situation of animals in the wild. The harms diseases cause are worsened by lack of access to treatment and sometimes the lack of opportunity to rest and recuperate. In addition to their debilitating effects on the body's ability to function and recover, illness and disease can increase the negative effects of environmental conditions and other stressors faced by wild animals. The result can be increased suffering and death. There are so many diseases that affect non-human animals in nature that they can't all be listed here. Some of them are illnesses humans can suffer from too, like flu, pneumonia, tuberculosis, cholera, Ebola, anthrax, salmonella, diphtheria, and rabies. Cancer is also common in both land and marine animals. Some populations of whales suffer from cancer at similar rates to humans. Other common diseases that can affect animals living in the wild are distemper, chronic wasting disease, African swine fever, worms, and a variety of fungal infections. Many people do not think much about how invertebrates might suffer, but they can contract bacterial, viral, and fungal infections like other animals do. Some are very specific to animals they infect and don't spread to vertebrates, but they can be treated similarly with vaccines, antibiotics, antifungals. One major disease that affects butterflies is nuclear polyhedrosis virus, or the Black Death. It's called this because those affected become lethargic and their bodies start to decay, turning black. Their insides then liquefy and ooze out of their decaying body. The virus usually strikes in the caterpillar phase. It causes a great deal of stress to the caterpillar, who will refuse to eat and may regurgitate food. The virus can take up to three days to kill the caterpillar. The infected drops of the liquefied body spread easily onto leaves and is further spread by parasites, infecting the caterpillars who eat those leaves. A widespread disease afflicting crickets is known as cricket paralysis virus. Infected crickets become malnourished, have trouble jumping, lose coordination, and then their legs become paralyzed and they fall on their backs, where they lie for a few days before dying. It can also affect other insects, and similar strains infect bees and flies. Lobsters can contract a common disease known simply as shell disease. Healthy lobsters have a slippery protective layer that prevents the shell from being eroded by bacteria. With shell disease, this barrier disappears, allowing the shell to start to erode. The disease itself is not always lethal, but it can cause the lobster distress and weakness, and increases vulnerability to other harms such as injury and predation. More is known about diseases that affect vertebrates. Vertebrate diseases tend to be easier to study because the animals are larger, and many vertebrate diseases are also known to be able to pass between a variety of vertebrates, including humans and domesticated animals. The following diseases are a sampling of common diseases in vertebrates. Avian cholera is a common bacterial disease in birds living in both temperate and arctic climates. Many birds carry the disease, but it only becomes active when the birds are physically or emotionally stressed. Very cold weather or high water forcing birds in temperate regions to leave their homes are common stressors that can bring out the disease in infected birds. It causes weight loss, mucus discharge, diarrhea, and br rapid breathing. It frequently leads to pneumonia. It can attack the liver, spleen, and skin, and causes arthritis due to inflammation. Avian cholera can have a very high mortality rate, especially when it first spreads through a colony. Distemper is a viral disease related to measles that attacks the gastrointestinal, respiratory, and nervous systems of mammals. It is commonly associated with dogs, but also affects many animals in the wild, including raccoons, foxes, wildcats, deers, monkeys, and seals. 
infected animals can in exhibit behaviors similar to those caused by rabies, including drooling, circling behavior, chewing fits, non-responsiveness to the environment, and a loss of hear of, of humans. It can cause fever, vomiting, convulsions, and paralysis. It is usually fatal. Those who survive may have permanent neurological damage. Amphibians are susceptible to deadly skin diseases, such as fungal infections and ranavirus. The aquatic fungal infection, chytridiomycosis, is one of the deadliest pathogens on record. It affects frogs, salamanders, and other amphibians in wet climate. The fungus eats through the animal's skin, causes metabolic changes, and finally kills the animal by triggering cardiac arrest. In addition to the skin, lesions develop on multiple internal organs and muscles. It spreads continually from immune amphibians to those who are vulnerable. Disease is more widespread in nature than many people realize. One of the reasons people misjudge the extent to which it affects animals in the wild is because many animals have evolved to avoid showing signs of illness. Animals who look weak or vulnerable are prime targets for predators. Moreover, those who live in groups may lose social status or be abandoned and be left to fend for themselves when they are least able. Alternatively, sometimes animals selectively exhibit sickness behaviors, such as lethargy and sleepiness. This happens when the sickness behaviors are not caused by the illness itself, but rather by conserving energy to fight off an illness. Depending on the time of year and other circumstances, showing signs of illness might reduce opportunities to, for reproduction or make it impossible to defend valuable territory. Therefore, an animal can be suffering greatly from a disease or an illness that we cannot recognize without performing medical checks. As more research is undertaken on how animals are affected by diseases in the wild, our knowledge of this area continues to grow. In the meantime, it is worth noting that there are recognizable behavioral signs in some animals who are experiencing fevers, including lethargy, decreased appetite, and reduced grooming. Humans can also learn a lot by observing larger animals in hospitals or doing autopsies, and there are increasingly sensitive methods of non-invasively detecting signs of illness in the wild. Some animals are hard to observe at all, such as small animals who spend most of their lives hiding underground, or extremely numerous, tiny invertebrates. Marine animals can also be difficult to study because of their numbers, and also because it's difficult to study them non-invasively. As a result, the amount of suffering caused by diseases in the wild is much greater than many people would imagine. Moreover, there is another often fatal threat to animals' health that sometimes overlaps with disease. This is parasitism. Approximately half of all species of animals and plants are parasitic at some stage in their life cycle, and few if any species are not infested by any parasites. Some parasites cause little harm to animals. Some, however, cause pain and weaken them. Parasitoids ultimately kill the animals they infest. The actions of a parasite can cause fatigue, making it harder for the host to find food and avoid predators. Some parasites castrate their hosts, leaving their other systems intact so that the host can survive, diverting the energy that would have gone into reproduction into sustaining the parasite. Some parasites cause behavioral changes in the hosts, particularly intermediate hosts, that make them more susceptible to predators, the final hosts. Intermediate hosts provide an environment for the immature parasite to develop and grow, and final hosts are where sexually mature parasites reproduce. Some parasites are called hyperparasites because they feed on other parasites. They are not to be confused with superparasites, which live in large populations within a single host, such as wasps, whose larvae are parasites of caterpillars. The following are some examples of parasites prevalent among wild animals. Sarcoptic mange is a skin disease caused by burrowing parasitic mites. The infestation causes an allergic reaction to the mite, resulting in intense scratching and biting. It affects several species of non-human mammals, including dogs, cats, coyotes, bears, and wombats. Wombats are particularly badly infected by mange. It is believed that this is due to conditions inside wombat burrows being especially conducive to the survival and transmission of sarcoptic mites. 
Infested wombats get bloody lesions, lose their hair, their skin becomes crusted and infected, and their eyes and ears become crusted over. The disease can cause blindness or deafness. In severe cases, it can lead to slow and lingering deaths. This is believed to be one of the most painful diseases afflicting non-human animals. Wild birds commonly suffer from trichomonosis, a disease caused by parasites. It can be a debilitating and sometimes deadly disease, which usually affects the mouth, esophagus, crop, and glandular stomach of birds, as well as other organs, such as the liver. Other extensively reported parasites in birds are tracheal worms. These obstruct the trachea and bronchi, resulting in major respiratory distress. In response, infested birds usually cough, sneeze, and shake their heads, trying to dislodge the parasites. As a result, they may lose body mass, display anemia, and often die of starvation. A similarly debilitating worm is the heartworm, reported among swans and geese. Hemoproteus, a protozoan parasite, transmitted by blood-sucking insects, has been reported in various species of reptiles and amphibians, mostly turtles and tortoises. It has debilitating effects on skeletal muscles and other organs, such as the liver. One protozoan parasitic infection causes colitis, abscesses of the liver and other organs, and sometimes death. Spirorchid trematodes infect turtles and snails, affecting major arteries and the heart. Other protozoan infections are reported in a variety of reptiles, mostly snakes and lizards, causing regurgitation, diarrhea, and weight loss, and enlargement of the gastric mucosa. So as we can see, there are many ways animals can suffer greatly due to disease and parasitism. Unfortunately, there are also other sources of suffering that can be just as harsh, as we will see in the next video, where we'll examine hunger, malnutrition, thirst, and psychological stress in wild animals.